Hey, algebra students. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about how to solve absolute value equations. An absolute value equation is simply an equation, so something with an equal sign in it, that includes at least one absolute value expression, and it's probably also going to include a variable. Okay, uh, so that's what an absolute value equation is. To solve, we have to figure out the value of the variable. Sometimes it's exactly what you think it's going to be, and sometimes it's not at all what you think it's going to be. So let's take a look at how to do this. Uh, first of all, let's just take a look at some theory behind this. Now, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about why the answers to these are what they are, but I am going to say this. Um, think about absolute values, okay? Let's say the absolute value of x equals 5. What are the possible values that I could plug in for x that makes this equation true? Well, do you see that there's going to be two values? I could plug in 5 because the absolute value of positive 5 is 5. Or I could plug in negative 5 because the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. And if you remember, when we first talked about absolute values, the reason this works this way is because absolute value just means the distance. We never count negative distance. It's the distance from 0 to a point on the number line. So from 0 to positive 5 is 5 units, or 0 to negative 5 is 5 units. You notice there are two different points that are exactly 5 units away from 0. That means that for most absolute value equations, there's going to be two answers. Now, the, there is one little caveat to that. Sometimes those answers are the same answer, so there's just one answer. And we're also going to learn that sometimes there are no answers. There's one little quirky thing we're going to be looking for that you just always have to be on the lookout for. There's one type of unsolvable absolute value equation. All right, let's dive into the practice. I'm going to show you how these work. And I'm just going to emphasize that actually within every absolute value equation, there is a hidden disjunction. Here's how you solve them. First of all, we need to get the absolute value expression on a side all by itself. Thankfully, in letter A, the absolute value expression, the absolute value of x right here, is all by itself on the left side. Once we have that absolute value expression on a side by itself, the pattern is always the same. We rewrite it without the absolute value. To get rid of the absolute value sign, all you need to do is write a disjunction. x equals 11 or x equals the opposite of 11. It's always going to be the same pattern. X equals whatever's on the other side of the equal sign. X equals negative whatever's on the other side of the equal sign. And uh, sometimes it's not just X. Notice that some of my absolute value expressions actually contain expressions within the absolute value bar. We'll get to some of those a little. Well, actually, the next problem is going to have one of those. This is the solution to letter A. And I can go back and check. Can I plug in 11 for x and it's true? Yes. Can I plug in negative 11? Yes. All right. That's the easy type of problem where we just have the absolute value already by itself. B steps things up a little bit. Now notice I have the absolute value expression by itself on one side of the equal sign. Great. That's a great place to start. I need to rewrite this expression without the absolute value sign by writing a disjunction. It's going to be Q plus 3 equals 6, or q plus 3, notice I'm just rewriting whatever's in the absolute value sign, equals negative 6. Now I have two equations to solve. The first one, I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. I'm going to get q equals 3, or, and the next one, I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides, q equals negative 9. Now, let me just make sure that these are right. I plug in 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. The absolute value of 6 is 6. What if I plug in negative 9? Negative 9 plus 3 is negative 6. The absolute value of negative 6 is 6. All right, we did it. So A and B were actually pretty easy ones to solve. Let's just double check and see if I got them right. Notice that uh, the answers in the book are in set notation. But the set of answers is 11 and negative 11. The set of answers is 3 and negative 9. 
We could use or notation instead of set notation. I kind of like the or notation because it reminds you that every absolute value uh, problem is actually a hidden disjunction. All right, letter C. Do we have the absolute value expression on a side by itself? Well, no, not for letter C. Uh, notice that it's four times the absolute value of Y. I have something outside my absolute value expression. First thing I have to do is get rid of that. To get rid of that, I'm just going to divide both sides by four first. I'll get the absolute value of Y equals 24 divided by four is six. Now I'm going to get rid of my absolute value sign by writing the disjunction. Y equals six or Y equals negative six. And that's my answer. Six or negative six. Let me just make sure we've got that over here. There we go. Letter D. Um, here, same sort of thing, except now instead of just having a single variable inside the absolute value, I have Z minus three inside my absolute value expression, my absolute value uh, sign. Same thing though, I have to get that on a side by itself. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna divide both sides by five. Hey, just so you know, the Z minus three inside the absolute value sign, the absolute value sign acts like a grouping symbol. So I can divide both sides by five and it's just gonna cancel the five off of this side. And what I'll have is the absolute value of Z minus three equals 20 uh, divided by five. I need to divide 20 by five. I divided both sides by five. So it's gonna be equals four. Now I'm gonna rewrite this Z minus three equals four or z minus three equals negative four. Now I've written the disjunction to get rid of the absolute value sign. I have to solve both sides of the disjunction. Z equals, let's see, let's start that over. Z equals seven or z equals, let's see, I add three to both sides of this. It's gonna be negative one. Negative four plus three is negative one. All right, let's see if I did this right. I'm going to plug in 7 up here. 7 minus 3 is 4. 5 times 4, the absolute value of 4 is just 4. 5 times 4 is 20. Or I plug in negative 1. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. I'm going to take the absolute value of that because positive 4. 5 times 4 is 20. We got it. All right, let's move on to letter E. And I'm just going to start a new column here. All right, letter E is x minus five plus three equals three. Hmm, well, how wonder how this one's gonna work out. So I'm gonna get rid of the extra three on this side by subtracting three from both sides. So what I'm gonna end up with is x minus five, the absolute value of that, subtract three from the left, subtract three from the right equals zero. Now when an absolute value equals zero, what is the distance of zero from zero? It's, it's zero, it's just one answer. So I think we're gonna find that this one is actually just gonna have one answer. I'm still gonna do it the same way. X minus five equals zero or X minus five equals negative zero. Well, zero is neither positive nor negative. So it's actually just gonna be the same thing. X minus five equals zero. I only have to write it once. The only answer that works for this one is x equals 5 when I add 5 to both sides. There we go. All right, letter F. And by the way, I should probably be checking these as I go just to make sure. So we got 7, negative 1. E has just one answer, 5. F is a trick question. Look at letter F. X, the absolute value of x minus 5 equals negative 1. If you ever simplify your absolute value equation and you have the absolute value of something equal to negative one, can the absolute value of something ever return a negative number? The answer is no. Now you could set this up as X minus five equals negative one or X minus five equals one and you could solve it, but you get a nonsensical answer. It wouldn't work. If you tried to plug it back in, you wouldn't be able to solve for this. So, the point is you just have to keep a lookout for an absolute value expression equal to a negative 
number. Because if you ever get this, the only answer that works is no solution or no real numbers. Okay, so that's what the, the book put the symbol for no real numbers. There's no solution to this problem. Uh, because there is no value you can plug in here that'll make the absolute value of an expression a negative number. Okay, so just watch for that. Um, sometimes it starts off looking like a normal problem, but then when you do all the simplification, you end up with an absolute value expression equal to a negative and can't happen. All right, letter G. This one is actually a little tough. We have to figure out how to work this one as an absolute value problem. A strawberry grower ships berries to a processing plant in 30 pound cases. The plant will not accept cases that differ from the weight by more than plus or minus 0.4 pounds. Write and solve an absolute value equation to find the minimum and maximum weights that the processing plant will accept. Letter G is sort of a tricky one to set up. So let's pay attention to how to do this. I'm just gonna say that problems like this will come up time and time again in the homework. And you just have to be ready to set this up. These are always going to be set up sort of the same way. Uh, so pay really close attention. It's just not obvious how to do it. But once you see the pattern, you'll be able to figure out how to do it the next time. All right, so here's what we're doing in this problem. We're saying that we're aiming for 30-pound cases. I'm going to start by writing the number that we're aiming for. But I'm going to acknowledge that we're not going to have exactly 30-pound cases. Some of our cases are going to be 30.1 pounds or maybe 29.9 pounds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the actual weight of the case from 30. And what do I get when I subtract the actual weight of the case from 30? Well, if my weight is lower than 30, I'm going to get a number that's a small positive. Like let's say it was 29.9. 30 minus 29.9 is 0.1. That means I was off by 0.1 pounds. So this gives me the amount that I'm off by or the error, okay? Now, what if I did 30.1? If I subtract 30.1 from 30, I'm going to get negative 0.1. But here's the thing. I don't care whether it's positive or negative. I just care that I'm off. So I'm going to put this in an absolute value symbol. Now, again, if you don't understand exactly why we're doing what we're doing, just pay attention to the pattern. The number that we're aiming for minus x and I'm going to find the absolute value of that. We want this to be equal to no more than 0.4. So I'm going to say it equals 0.4. Let's figure out what, what our X would have to be for us to be off by 0.4 pounds. All right, now I'm just going to solve this as an absolute value expression. 30 minus X equals 0.4 or 30 minus x equals negative 0 0.4. Uh, in this first one, I'm going to subtract 30 from both sides. I'll get negative x equals negative 29.6. Or if I simplify that, it's x equals 29.6 when I multiply both sides by negative 1. OK, that's the minimum that I could get and be 0.4 pounds off. Or on the other side of this, it's, uh, let's see, I'm going to subtract 30 from both sides. I'll get negative X equals negative 30.4. And then when I multiply both sides of that, I get X equals 30.4. So X equals 29.6, that's the minimum, or X equals 30.4, that's the maximum. Let's just make sure I did this right. There we go. The only thing I was missing was my labels of pounds. Now you know how to use absolute value uh, expressions and equations and solve those equations. Go ahead and do 1 through 34 next time.